Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Bubloon, aka Pabloon, and today I wanted to make a video about this new destroyer tech line we're getting, the multinational pan-European line that features the Moabinet, the Stored, the Grom, the Split, the Lambros Katsonis, and the Gdansk. So we have both some Turkish, Norwegian, Polish ships in here, and um, yeah, I am going to go over the tech line and tell you guys what I think are the, the good ships in this line and which ones I think are kind of meh. And um, the first one here is the tier 5, the Mavonet. It's a, it's a very underpowered DD in my opinion. You only get speed boost and one smoke and the guns themselves reload quite slowly compared to some of the other tiers. You get 120s, reload in under 5 seconds with reload mod. and. It, this ship does not really feel too crazy. You also only get one torpedo tube. And remember that these torpedoes are just like Bliskavica, so they're very fast, have a high percentage of flooding, but they don't do very much damage. And since you only have one torpedo tube, it's sorry, one launcher, it's it's not really that powerful. Next up here we have the Where is it? The stored. So this is the Norwegian ship we're getting. And this thing, this thing's good. This is a great little tier 6 DD. You finally have two torpedo launchers, and as you can see here, the reload is a lot better. Almost, well, over one second down from the tier 5. So, um, yeah. You can also see we get an extra smoke, but other than that, it's very much the same. So, uh, I'm going to show you guys some gameplay here, talk a little bit about this ship. Here we are, and uh, we're going to be showing a little bit of gameplay here of the store. If you were watching my stream when these things released, uh, you know, for us to talk about, show videos of, we did play through the whole tech tree. And um, the reason I'm showing you guys the store is because I think it's a really good ship. So it, it has the exact same play style as the tier 10, and that's what I really like about this line. It, it actually feels like, you know, it, it retains the, the play style that you're supposed to be playing throughout the whole tech tech tree you know some tech trees you have you know a finite line or sorry you have a line that you have to play and this is the play style this is how they're supposed to be played and then one tier is just completely weird i mean I, i'm thinking of the is it the gokase in the um japanese light cruisers my point being that this whole line is very streamlined and the tier six here is a very good representation of what the gdansk feels like these fast firing guns are really really fun to use they aren't very accurate but you can see we can easily lay down a lot of pressure on this Alba here. So, yeah, tier 6, definitely a plus for me. We're gonna skip ahead a little bit in this game so I can show you guys how it fights versus a New Mexico. So here we are, we're finally about to take out this Alba here. The The main thing about this line in general is just the amount of fires you set on unsuspecting targets. I just got this fire on the Alba and I'm just gonna let it burn out because I don't think he has a damage control and there we go, he's, he's done. done. Now our smoke is about to dissipate, and the New Mexico here is, I think he's well aware of my presence. But it's going to be very hard for him to do anything, because the very very slow speed that New Mexico sails at is not going to be able to get away from these torpedoes. So once I get a damage control from him, once I see him use that, then I know it's the perfect time to launch torpedoes. Now in this clip here I do kind of mess it up, and we don't get a flood, but you can see the idea here. I actually thought he didn't have a damage control, so once I got this second fire and I saw he instantly DCP'd, I knew, okay, well, there are 8 seconds until his damage control runs out. Maybe these torps will flood, maybe they won't. But it, let's say he did not have a DCP running, there was highly likely going to be a flood here. And that's how you play this, it's your bread and butter. Now, I'm going to show you guys a bullshit example of um, one of my critiques for this game, which is Ghost Shells. Notice my... on the in the you know, next to the map in the top left corner. Notice my latency and connection. Alright, so we're fighting this New Mexico still. Just look at that. The The lag here is insane. Now, I know I'm playing on NA. And obviously on NA, I'm going to have worse connection since I live in Europe. But just notice the connection bar in the top left. Because what's about to happen is probably the most BS thing I've ever experienced. The only thing, it, the only reason it can be kind of manageable in this ship is because the torpedoes reload so fast so what's gonna happen is i'm gonna be taking out this new mexico we've been fighting for the longest time finally able to take him out here the dallas finishes him off and now we're gonna be you know trying to take out the other new mexico and he's pushing so obviously we're gonna go for torpedoes we launch them white line 
that is pretty much going to make sure that they hit because they're so darn fast. Just look at them travel across the map. That's, this New Mexico doesn't really have a chance. But watch what happens. Torpedoes are going in. They are going in. And three, two, one. What's happening? Where is my hits? It's not even delayed. It just didn't happen. It didn't register the hits. Like, Wargaming, get get your fucking shit together. That's that's horrible. Like, if that was a Shimakaze and you were on your last rights, that, that's all you have. If your freaking torpedoes don't work, like, come on. But yeah, that is the stored right here. You see the high damage number we got. You are able to farm for days with this thing. And that's what I love about this line. You're really just a big farmer. And he is going to take us out here, Corn Pop. But um, he did get a heal off, and that's probably the only reason. Now, let's move on to the other tiers. Alright, next up here in the tech line is the tier 7 Grom, and um, this is a Polish DD, it's supposed to be a Bliskowicza, the Grom and the Bliskowicza. And this thing is pretty similar to the stored, except you get radar, but the cost for this radar and getting these... On the stored you only have single turrets, on this thing you do have some double barrel turrets, it seems you have three and only one single. You get more guns, but you also get a longer reload. So the stored had a 375 and this thing is a 461. So we're back again, just like the tier five with a longer reload. But of course you do retain the nice torpedo package here and they do do some more damage on this thing, the Grom here. Now, just like the tier five, I didn't think this one was too special. I didn't think it was bad like the tier 5 but I don't think this one is a highlight of this tech tree I definitely think the tier 6 is way more enjoyable as you also saw in the gameplay the thing is just a fire hose I mean it shoots all the time you have torpedoes smoke it's really fun this thing of course retains that but you are going up to tier 8 which I do think this thing will struggle just a little bit now let's move on to the tier 8 the split and um this thing has the weirdest camo in the whole world I don't know guys I'm just gonna show you there's trees on the cannons there's a tree of life, I don't know if you can see that, it's a little bit hard, on the bridge. And it's covered in moss. So this is the historical camo. And then there are, of course, we get into the special ones here. But actually, I would rather have this, since it gives you surface detection. You get better gun, gun characteristics with this, but really not needed. The split here is kind of like the Grom, except you get more of every... Uh, of your speed boost and your smoke you still only have one radar but if you do have jersey swirsky you can bump that up to two remember that this commander jersey swirsky is going to be insane on this line so the guns are finally going up a caliber we have 140 millimeters now and you can see they're again single turrets they do reload quite fast though 380 under four seconds and you get more range more he pen also since it's a bigger caliber and a higher fire chance the high fire chance is because I've taken this upgrade, Advanced HE Shell. That is going to help you a lot with this line, trust me. But you again, you have some torpedoes that do more damage now. They were 2000 at tier 7, now they're 2300. And they still have the same range. So um, yeah, that is the split right here. Now the gameplay I'm offering here for this video is, first of all, I'm doing this 6, 8, and 10 because like I said, those are the ones I feel like are of note here but here we have the uh a little clip from a game i had in the split earlier today and just kind of to show you guys how this thing performs and how it feels so you do have five of these 140 millimeter guns that reload quite quickly and you can see already this feels like an akisuki the amount of firepower you can lay down or at least these single shells coming out it's you can see what i was talking about it's stagger fire you could just keep continuing to shoot on and on and on and that's why i like this split i think this is really a good tier 8 dd because it's it's very oppressive you can fight other destroyers you're super annoying towards battleships we can see we already got this guy's damage control our torpedoes are on the way and well i, I can spoil it for you guys he is gonna get flooded so you see me here just flanking around the enemy team slowly chipping away at this alabama and the kansas over there's he's gonna be the next target if everything goes right so you see how easy it was for me to get his damage control, set a fire on him, chuck some torpedoes, and now we also have a flood. And it doesn't matter how tanky your ship is, if it's a fire or a flood you have, you are going to take percentage health damage. That's why these things are so powerful, man. So we see a whole clusterfuck of enemies over there, and I'm going to focus on the DD as much as I can, because 
you see that damage? 446 for an HE shell hit. These shells don't mess around with DDs, bro. And do not pick a fight if you're a Kagero and you're alone. Do not pick a fight with one of these. So there we see, we got a fire, we hit another Torp, and um, the clip, you know, the part I'm going to show you here is pretty much over. But it's just like a little teaser so you guys can see what what's in store for us. And, uh, well, I really like the split. I've also been to the city in real life. Um, so, yeah, I guess the split is kind of nice. A, a seal of approval from Bob here. All right, here we are, guys. That was the split. A very fun destroyer, in my opinion. A highlight of this tech tree, if you ask me. Reason being, you can shoot really fast with those guns and you retain having two torpedo tubes or launchers on target. Now, the Lambros Katsonis, the only Greek ship we have in this game, from my knowledge. And the reason this thing is not very good is because of this. You only have one torpedo launcher per side. And when your torpedoes reload in 50 seconds, which is quite a lot longer than some of the you know earlier tiers, they do go 83 knots, it's just not enough with the damage. This is not going to be your bread and butter, and you're missing, you're really missing that other side of torpedoes. That's the biggest downside to this ship. Now you do have a lot of guns, 140 millimeters as you can see. Reloading in fast 3.7 seconds, which is good. But this thing is just not my, you know, pizza cake. I don't like this, I don't enjoy this, and I honestly think you guys should skip it. Because the thing is just not cut out for tier 9 if you ask me it would be honestly better if they swap this with the tier 8 but yeah that's the lambros katsonis and um, i'm not gonna talk too much about it i just wanted to let you guys know that this thing is not worth grinding through if you have 3 xp now on to what i am really excited about and that is of course the gdansk the tier 10 named after the beautiful polish city this thing is a monster guys you get 139 millimeter guns and uh, that is one millimeter less than the previous tiers. But they reload in 3.6 seconds. That's 0.10 seconds faster than Lambros Katsonis. You have insane HE damage. Remember, guys, I should have probably said this. These things don't have AP. So if you've been screaming at the, you know, the, the, the monitor of the screen saying, Bob, use fucking AP. This is why. But anyways, you get decent range, insane penetration. Again, we have 5.35 higher percent because I took the advanced HE shell. I think you should th do that too. And then we get awesome torpedoes as well. 2.6k damage, 8 kilometer range, 86 knots. So very, very, very fast and a 39% flooding chance. The AA sucks and the surface detection is kind of rough. But I will take you guys into a game with this thing and uh, I'll remember the commander this time. And this one will be a live commentary because I do think this is the cream of the crop. And now I've told you guys what I think are the highlights of this tech tree. It's definitely the tier 6, the stored, the tier 8, the split, and of course, the Gdansk. Now, that being said, the only one of the in this tier that I really didn't enjoy was the Labros Katsonis. The Ma Mawinet tier 5, sure, it, it was okay. It was just not very interesting. But all the other ones, the tier 6, 7, 8, and 10 are really good. So let's hop in. Alright, so here we are. This is a game. <laughs> well, this is a game. Definitely is. And we are playing with a CV. And uh, two, looks like two freaking Columbos. And I think one of them is a viewer. So we, we're going to have to watch out. We have a quite a strong DD lineup here. I forgot to mention the camo. Uh, again, this is the same as with the stored or the grom, no not the grom, the split, so the tier 6 and the tier 8. The historical camos are actually better, but Wargaming decided to, you know, make the historical camo of this ship just plain grey. So if you've seen the Leipzig or what else can we think about, you know, ships that have a historical camo, that pretty much just changes the hue. That camo, the historical camo, is better because it gives you surface detection. But this thing, I mean... I like the look of it, it's kind of steampunky, it's not too obnoxious, and it does improve your gun characteristics, which is not bad on this ship, because you will be firing a lot. Now, this thing only comes with two radar, only. It's pretty pretty darn decent if you ask me, but since we do have Jersey Swirsky, we have the improved radar skill, and we get an extra radar. So I'm going to follow Don Juan here, what up Don Juan, my good man, in the Lucian. What do we got? That's a Colombo out there, so um, 
what I think I want to do is just start firing at this man. Setting him on as much fire as I can. And just smoking up immediately, actually, because, uh... Yeah, I don't want to get blapped by a Columbo. But as you can see, 199 damage per hit with HE. And the fire chance, of course, is, is through the roof. It's crazy good. You just need to farm HE spam all the time, guys. If you are into DDs and cruisers, this is going to be right up your alley, man. I can tell you one thing. I was very excited to see something like this being added. After a long time of just hiatus. Pretty much nothing into the game. There's a... Bro is actually running away. They killed our gearing. I'm gonna go for this Columbo here. I'm gonna play it risky and actually see if I can let him up. So if I can get if I can get a permanent fire on him, that'd be very nice. I mean we're just gonna farm this guy. That's the perma fire we were looking for. There's a cruiser to my left. What is that? Looks to be a Napoli. We might want to be a little bit careful about a Napoli, to be honest. Good job. Just gonna keep firing on Colombo here. Nice. I'll reverse, and I don't think he's gonna hit anything. Nope. Hit nice juke on that salvo right there. That's good. Don Juan is pushing up with us. I think we're gonna go undetected here and let this guy use his smoke, and we're gonna reposition. One thing to mention about the Gdansk is you see the torpedo angles here, or the spread is quite wide, so you're gonna have to be aware of that when you're launching torps, because they will definitely not hit all of them. Here we go, launching torpedoes on a Columbo. We're using our second smoke, because the threat of Columbo here is no joke. He could kill us very quickly. Looks like our torps are gonna be successful. You see the, the rear ones won't be hitting even though we, you know, Placed it perfectly on him, the white line. But a triple fire and a perma flood is enough to finish the dude off. Let's use our speed boost and push up to take out the Napoli here. And uh, there's really nothing I'm afraid of because the thing about HE guys is it's consistent damage, and this thing also is very good at getting fires. Uh, they're taking our base. We have to get there quick. There's high high likelihood that there's torpedoes. Guys, we need to defend the base now. I'm gonna see if I can get a permafire on this guy before he buggers off. There we go. That's what I was hoping for. I have to I have to hope my team is able to defend that. It, it doesn't look like it, to be honest. Um but I'm gonna try my very, very best to help the team out. Midway is over there. I guess we'll help with him. What about this Fletcher here? Is he gonna... So we have a Napoli who's mad. And I'm gonna see if I get some Torps on this dude. Before... Okay, Napoli is just leaving, so... Okay, they're out of the base. Apparently they just left the base. That's very lucky for us. Now we have to get... Hope that we don't get blasted by Midway here. Okay, we did. It's great. It's fun. Love Midway. Well, we did get a perma flood on this guy, so I'm kind of confident we'll be able to take him out. That should be it. 90,000 damage. Oh, we're detected now. That's not too great. I have to hope my team is able to defend me. Help kill this uh, Napoli. Oh, he just took out a bunch of my HP there. That's not good. Final heal, and we're still alive. We lost. We lost the game, they captured it, but hey, it's um, <laughs> a very good representation, I think, since we got the MVP and lost the game. That just goes to show wow, how powerful this thing really is. You saw how little effort it took. I mean, we sailed up, smoked, shot at the Columbo, pushed up to him, fired torpedoes, and he was done. 10 fires, 10 torp hits, 2 floods. Very easy thing to farm Witherers with, guys. Very easy thing to farm Witherers. So, that is going to be it for this video about the new EU DDs coming out. They are in early access in EU right now. As I'm recording this, it's not currently on the US servers, but will come very soon, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, yeah, I hope I prepared you a little bit for this new line. All the DD players out there are probably rejoicing right now. So am I. 
But yeah, thank you for watching. My name has been Bubloon, aka Pabloon, and I am signing out. And before that, just check out this boring ass camo, guys. Just look at this. Like, <laughs> I, I, you can't call this a camo wargaming. It changes the hue. That's what it does. Anyways, I'm signing out. See you later, guys.